if I'm one of those people, what do you tell me around that? I know I should exercise. Everything that you've just told me is so true. I've exercised in the past. I get the endorphins. I feel better. It's not just happening for me. My doctor tells me if I don't exercise, my cardiovascular system's never going to recover. I'm, I'm going to be have higher stroke risk. Mm. What do you tell me if I'm that person? I think the doctor's told them a lot. So what drives behavioural change? Fear. If you tell me that I'm going to have a heart attack and then I link that to my life and I link that to what's meaningful to me, for me as an individual, that's meaningful enough for me to change my lifestyle. Sure. But not for everyone, which is crazy, isn't it? It's because it's not. And that's as, as true as I sit here because, you know, we see people every day and that's not enough for some people. So sometimes the process, and it doesn't have to, you know, a lot of the times people say you need to find your why and then you'll find your way. But often we don't find our why at the start. No. So one of the great things about working with a coach is it's a commitment and you mm. don't have to work with a coach. Now you actually... You can work with a coach called your iPhone yeah. because you, there's apps yeah. that will track you and they will even the algorithm will increase the steps that you need to take. And it's linked to human reward behavior. It buzzes at 10,000 steps. <laughs> oh, I lost 10,000 steps. I did it again. So there's that reward pathway. Um, so what I, what I tell people that come and just say I have this first meeting with someone and they've just said to me, I've just been to the doctor, classic story, I've just been to the doctor and I'm not doing very well. If I keep this lifestyle, something bad's going to happen. Mm -hmm. enter, enter your something bad. That's mm -hmm. great. Validate that and how keen are you to start and maybe they're not keen. So then we can also link it to, you know, run away from pain, run towards pleasure. Well, then what about, you know, do you have your, your work? Is your work meaningful? Do you think that if you had better health in your hips, neck, shoulders, uh, spine, that you would be better at your work if that pain went away? Mm -hmm. Do, and the answer is yes, of course. It's, yeah. Do you think yeah. that if you naturally had more energy, vitality, and you've got to earn that, that's a meritocracy. You don't just wake up and be a vital, energetic person. Mm. That's a meritocracy. Mm. So, But do you think that if you brought more energy to your day, that your work, your life, your connections with your significant other, your if you have kids, your mates, do you think that would be more meaningful, and you could engage in that in a better way? And the answer is yes. Okay. So you understand that you're scared of dying. Can I just simplify it to be really smashed the glass window? Because yeah. I am, and death rate in humans is what, 100%? Pretty Today. Much. Today it is. Yep. Anyway, I'm, you know, there's that 500-year-old man out there somewhere, but I haven't seen him. Come on, Google Come Apple. Come on. Come on, Google <laughs> Apple. Change it. Change it. <laughs> so there is that fear, but then... Just like the pursuit and ensue, you know, if, if you connect to something that's meaningful, genuinely meaningful, it doesn't have to come straight away because when you start to move better, then all of a sudden the person says, you know what, I didn't tell you this before, but I've always wanted to do an ocean swimming race. Mm -hmm. And it's been so far away from my current capabilities that I just haven't told anyone. And when I was a kid, I did it and I had a great experience. I did the ocean swim at Main Byron Bay, Australia. Swam from Wadigos to the surf club there. I crossed mm. two reefs. When I did it, came seventh. I followed the turtle for a while. Like mm. it, literally, mm. that's a true story. It was mm. amazing. So I, I have this, honestly, I have this desire to do that with my family, my wife and my two kids. That would be the best day. So that's one thing. That, that, that is always in my brain, no joke. It's always there. So it's very easy for me to go for a swim and enjoy the hell out of it because I'm thinking one day when my kids are older we're going to be swimming from water goes to the Byron Bay Surf Club in May it's going to be a little bit chilly but that energy of the event so I, I get really excited by that and that drives my human behaviour sure so when people come in and they're full of apprehensions mate you know just as good as I do they're full of apprehensions our role I believe my role is to find something that will initiate a commitment. And sometimes I break it down, what is energy? So do you understand periodization? To some extent, yeah. yeah. Just say, if, you know, in sickness, if your energy is down, what it, let's start with what is energy. In, in physics, energy is capacity or potential to do work. Mm -hmm. Let's apply that to you and I. If I bring more energy to my day, then I should be able to get more work done. If I'm low on energy then I can't get as much work done. If I'm high on energy, I'm vital, I should be able to get more work done. Mm, mm. And everybody knows that. Mm. Compounding that, if you work in an environment, you 
own a business like I do, or you, you're, you're uh, in someone who's in a leadership role, the energy you bring to your day is what? It's contagious. Everybody's yeah. heard that. Energy's contagious. Yes, so, oh, here comes, here comes Jono, that guy. He's just such negative energy. He just mm. brings the room down. Mm. Energy's contagious. All of a sudden, here comes Phil. Phil's a bloody great bloke. Am I allowed to, that's a little bit of a cuss word. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. You, all, you guys cool with that? Of course. Right, okay. <laughs> Phil's a bloody great bloke. Whenever he comes in, he just lights the room up. Like when you spoke at, at Inside Scoop, when you were speaking to everyone, you could just see everyone sort of sat up because mm. yours was the dominant energy in the room because you were giving the presentation, but it's also yeah. contagious. So I don't know about you right now. That's genuinely, that's genuinely a true statement about you, but you just smiled. Do you sort of go... Well, that's pretty cool. Thanks, Andrew. That's really nice. And actually, I, I really do like to know that I've got good energy and I like to know that I can influence people and that mm. my energy is contagious. Yeah. It's subtle things. Do you know what I mean? It's subtle things that people like to know that change is possible. Um, they also like to know that they're doing okay. And if you continue to do what you're doing, you're going to get better. Energy, vitality is a meritocracy. All those things that you want to achieve, you have to earn. I'm, I'm afraid it's not going to come to you for free. And you know what's worse? There's no one in a white coat or there's no knight in shining armour who's going to come and do it for you. No. Of course you can elicit help from outside people who may know the subject better than you and will guide you in the right direction sooner. 100%. Otherwise, we wouldn't have a job, would you? Sure. And I love my job. Of course. And I studied the hell out of it, so I think I can help. I'm confident and I have help. Um, so using a coach is a really great way. But often those those early days, those early sessions are just let's just connect to something that's meaningful. Mm. You know, that's connect. And then it's setting triggers. Years ago, I worked with a lady who was very very overweight, like she was morbidly obese, um, and behaviour change was hard. And there was a whole host of reasons why she ate and all that sort of stuff. But one of the things that was probably when I look back over all, you know, when you you learn something from every client, when I look back. That interaction with this lady, let's call her Trevor. Mm. That's a guy's name, I know. But anyway, it was a lady. We're protecting her. And her name was Trevor. (laughs) What? (laughs) Anyway, Trevor, the lady, um, we made a deal that every day when you get up, Trevor, you have to put on your sneakers. No matter how you feel, no matter what other words in your head, guarantee me that you'll put on your sneakers. And it became a trigger. So once you put on the sneakers, what's next? I might as well go out the door and I'll walk around the block. That's a start. And that's, that's where we started. And me, in my enthusiastic way, trying too much too soon, I was setting, when we first started working together, I was setting these grand goals based on science and what you needed, but it wasn't working. And she was the greatest teacher for me because I wasn't doing the best that I could do because I was setting the bar way too high, way too soon. Patience is a form of action. Andrew, I'm talking to myself. Patience is the form of action. Find a better option. And honestly, the best option which set the dominoes to, for her to achieve what she wanted to achieve was the biggest thing when I think back about this lady, Trevor. Put your shoes on. Every day she had to put her shoes on. When you put your shoes on, look down and you go, oh, okay, I've got my shoes on. I might as well go outside. And literally that was the step that got her to walk every day around the block. I've walked one lap of the block. You know what? I might as well walk too. And you know what? I might as well take my shopping bag with me and I'll walk down to the wet markets here in Hong Kong and grab some veggies. And that just something so seemingly innocuous and small was was the, the trigger that when I reflect, that was the biggest thing that made a change for her. 